One more step, guys, until opening day action is getting underway. Let's talk about the offseason here. Just a quick reminder of how we determined what we're going to do with these exclusive free agents. So guys that were 80 overall and above on these other teams. Obviously, I'm making the calls for Richmond. I want to know what we were going to do with players like Jared Tobin, guys like Robbie Herzog, guys like Killian Graham for Iowa, the closer. We decided that we were going to wheel spin and kind of capture that player autonomy. What does the player want to do, right? You can offer him a bunch of money and get into the green and he's always going to accept, right? So I want to capture the player decision, the player choice in these negotiations. So if these 80 overall exclusive free agents, if they decided that they were going to stay, we wheel spun it and it would land on yes. If it landed on no, they were going to leave and test free agency. Guys like Julian Lorenz, he decided that he was going to stay. He's an 80 overall shortstop. Killian Graham, a 90 overall closer. So he's definitely fitting the bill with that 80 plus overall. A guy like Trujillo, a guy like Marquez, a guy like that's coming up is a catcher, Cameron Moyer. These guys are not 80 overall, but they were exclusive for agents. I had to make that call on my own. And it looks like that New York's got some depth there, got some young catchers, got some youth there. We're going to go ahead and just say that Cameron Moyer is going to test free agency. Now, a guy like Ricky Holberman, he is a custom player. He's my custom player. I would, I, I can make the decision for him that he was going to test free agency, and we still have to wheel spin a top five list of teams that I thought he should consider going to, and luckily, he lands on Richmond. And I even told my private group in my Discord there, my moderation crew for the GGBL, how excited I was that it landed on Richmond. So I had some teams that he was considering, Houston, Wisconsin. And you guys, if you have custom prospects that fit that bill as well, you can choose that. You can go that route as well. Just it costs some channel points to give me a top five list of teams that you would consider. So now let me talk to you guys about how we were gonna do tender contracts with these 80 overall players. So what I did is I went to my Discord group here and I was like you know what guys we need to get this free agent list a little bit more beefed up so there's a ton of players in tender contracts that are up for negotiation their contract is over they were on a one-year deal they're up for negotiation so how are we going to turn how are we going to beef this thing up well I had the guys and myself go through every single team I gave them a video to watch they looked through it and they ultimately just ultimately came up with this list here um, this is my list, so I'm picking Steve Cuevas from Vancouver to be the guy that's that's up to a yes-no wheel spin. So I came up with my list, and then the other guys, like Portugal, they came up with their list, right? So there were some differences here. But for the most part, we pretty much agreed on a lot of guys, like Harmon Connor. We thought that he was going to be a guy that could be a yes-no for Pittsburgh. BJ Franks we agreed on for Michigan. Manny Escalona for Chicago, George Cruz, we all agreed on that for Iowa. Now I did make some mistakes here. I included Richmond losing Jonathan Piazza. I did take this off. We already lost an 80 overall player, our closer, Brian Ortiz. I think he's an 81, so he's gonna test free agency. We're gonna take him off the list. Then I included Pat Kiesler here. He's actually a custom player. We took him off um, and we went with Robbie Meyer, a starting pitcher for the New Orleans swing. So there's the Richmond uh, mistake there. We're just going to take Jonathan Piazza off. Now, so all these guys that we agreed upon, those guys are going to be the ones that are subjected to a wheel spin, the, the yes, no. If they say yes, they're going to go to free agency. If they say no, they are going to stay on their current team. I think I got that right. We'll see what the wheel spin says. But overall, just giving you an update here with the exclusives. We got Julian Lorenz still has yet to sign. There's Brian Ortiz. We don't have an offer on him. And then Philadelphia as well. They are not losing an 80 overall player in tender contracts because they just lost Freddie Foley. I don't think it's quite fair to lose a bunch of your talent. Don't want that to happen. So that's kind of how we're running this thing. So let's just see. Was I right here? Did I get this right? The yes, no? We'll see. If they land on yes, I think that they are testing for agency. If they land on no, I think they're staying. I think I said that right. Okay, so Cuevas... For Vancouver, the starting pitcher, he's going to stay with Vancouver for next season. Rob Cortez, is he going to go? He's going to leave. He's a pretty darn good player for the LA Knights. He's an outfielder. He's definitely going to be a highly sought-after player. He's going to be leaving, so he's going to test free agency. So we're going to zoom through all of this and see, out of all of these 18 players, 
how many are staying and how many are leaving? Well, after it's all said and done, three guys out of 18 <laughs> decided that they were gonna test free agency. It's crazy, I swear to God, this series is like reverse curse. Like I want that free agent list to get beefed up. That's the goal, that's why we wanted to do this, this process, but 50-50 chance, yes, no, and three out of 18 said that they were gonna test free agency. Crazy, absolutely nuts. So a guy like Harmon Connor, he is gonna get offered a contract, so he's not leaving. Alex Humberto, he's not leaving. BJ Franks, no contract offered for him. Debro, no contract offered for him, he's leaving. But just as an example, I ran through Oklahoma City, I ran through every other team to sign up guys on the tender contracts screen. So here's an updated look at the free agents. You can see some guys have signed, some guys have not. But these 77 overalls and lower, every team is going to have a shot at those players, 77 and below. Anybody that's 80 plus, we already figured out what we're gonna do with them. So Ricky Holman, custom guy, gonna offer him a contract for Richmond, but a guy like Freddie Foley, he's a 95 overall player. We haven't decided what we're gonna do with him yet, right? What are we gonna do about Brian Ortiz? Where's he gonna go? Where's BJ Frank's gonna go? So ultimately what the team and I did is we looked at every team's roster, we looked at every team's depth chart and had to make a call. You know, where does BJ Franks fit? You know, you can argue that everybody needs pitching. Everybody could use an 80, 23 year old player, but what teams are absolutely desperate? Like I wanted to focus on teams that are trying to get better, you know, rather than just stack depth, basically. So I had the guys run through and look at each team's depth chart. So for this example, we're looking at first baseman. This is for Freddie Foley's wheel that we're gonna come up with. All the teams that we think that should be in on the Freddie Foley sweepstakes. And you could argue, because he's a 95 overall player, he's a really good hitter, one of the best in the league. You could argue that a guy like that, every single team across the league needs to be in on him. You could argue that, and I could agree with you completely. But I also wanted to make sure that like custom players were not getting their playing time blocked by a guy like that. He's a non-custom guy. You know, I have custom player bias. <laughs> I want you I want your guys to play and get playing time. So a guy like Robert Hayes, he's 84. Is San Francisco in on Freddie Foley? Is LA in on Freddie Foley? They've got a pretty decent player with an A potential, I thought I saw. So the guys came up with their lists. I basically took all of their teams and I put them on a wheel spin list and let the player decide where he wanted to go. What offer did he want to take, right? So let's get into it. Let's show you guys for transparency purposes and a little suspense where these guys are going. So BJ Franks is going to head out to Colorado. Now, every time that one of these teams takes an 80 plus overall player, that's what these guys are that have the wheel spins, I need to remove those teams from the list. I should have removed Colorado here from Brian Ortiz, but it didn't matter anyway, because he's going to Minnesota. Now I'm removing Minnesota from Freddie Foley's list. So you guys can see San Antonio, Houston, New York, Seattle. Is it gonna be Seattle? Is he gonna pair up with KAJ? No, he's going to New York. So New York stays winning and they get a huge player in Freddie Foley. That's gonna be absolutely big time for that offense i swear to you so it's gonna be interesting to see how he does paired up with a lot of first basemen that they have gus de is gonna head to st louis he's a pretty decent outfielder not the best but he's he's pretty good not too bad i think he's more of a defensive minded guy than an offensive guy but let's see what rob cortez is gonna do so we got the two outfielders here cortez and de pretty much the same teams on the same list the same wheel basically you know, they both play the same position. They're both left fielders. You would think that if they can't, some teams can't get one, they might want to go with the other. But Rob Cortez is going to stay in the NL West. He was a LA Knight and he's going to head out to Vancouver. Very good hitter. Very good hitter. Look at those hot and cold zones. Hit 306 last season, 11 stolen bases, 21 home runs. And then you look at Gus DeBro. He's got some pretty decent hot spots too. He's a whole, whole field approach hitter. And he can, actually, he's a, he's a pretty good one too. Freddie Foley, see what he's got going on. And I'm not kidding you, he's a very, very good hitter. 32 home runs last year. And um, 
kind of just giving you a snapshot of you know what these guys are bringing to the table for their respective teams. So Brian Ortiz going to Minnesota, they needed that. BJ Franks, he can go quite a long time. He's an 89 at the stamina rating, and he won 11 games last year too. So here's your offers on the board. You've still got Herzog. He's an exclusive free agent. You got Lorenz is still there for Colorado. You can't really count him as a guy that that the team's like gaining. You know, like Colorado is still is still game to go get BJ Franks. So just to let you guys know how that's all going to work. So don't don't get confused. If you sign an exclusive guy, he was already a part of your team. You can go out and get a guy like BJ Franks. You're still able to do that. But a guy like Holberman, he elected free agency. He's not going back to Boston. Richmond's out on any 77 and below at this point. So Richmond's not on the list. Anybody that got an 80 overall through tender contracts right that's what we just did they're not on the list anymore so no minnesota no new york they can't get cameron moyer that's how that's gonna work but this is hilarious by the way this is absolutely hilarious cameron moyer if you guys remember he was on atlanta's team last year and they traded him to new york for a postseason push got a bunch of prospects back now he's a free agent and he's going back to Atlanta. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. So the Columbus Cardinals are going to get Gustavo Collado, a 75 overall player. And it's it's kind of weird with the contracts as well because because of these guys' age. Collado's a 21 year old. He doesn't have enough service time to, to make over like the million dollars, right? So so the game sees it as like, oh, I'd be good with 900k. So I try to offer those guys something reasonable because they are going to be a big factor in that team's depth. I think that that guy is a 75C. He's definitely going to be on the roster. I think he's not going to be in the minor leagues. Now, this is the guy that is actually going to be on Carolina because Bautista, the right fielder, right above De Los Santos, he's a deep potential player. So I didn't focus on deep potential guys. Even though they have a pretty good rating, those guys still have regression no matter how well that they play. They're kind of like one and done type of players. So basically I just repeated that process from the big wheel and made sure that all 30 teams got at least somebody, one guy with a C potential or above from the big free agent pool. Now you're gonna see some people here in this slow scroll with the D potential. That was actually when I turned it on to auto to make sure that every team got their 93 man roster filled up. So you are gonna see some teams here, maybe a couple times, maybe twice, guys that like Hector Ferreria, the second baseman, 67D, that was not from wheel spin, that was from just me turning on to auto, making sure that each team had the 93 man roster. So guys, that's basically free agency. A lot of these guys are not gonna amount to much with the D potentials, but that was it. I mean, it's it was pretty fun. Freddie Foley, Holberman, Kind of the two big names in free agency gonna go to new york and then richmond be interesting to see how that they do for season number two they're kind of the old the old vets they could start seeing some major regression in the next couple of seasons so you know richmond signing him up to a max deal that's uh it's a little risky it's a little risky on our part but it was really the only way to go sign him and um we're excited. We're excited about Ricky Holman, what he's going to bring. 99 overall, baby. Let's go. Let's go. We're going to go back to the gold series. <laughs> now, before I end today's video for the offseason, I just want to bring our attention back to the fantasy game because the fantasy game for season two is coming back, but it is going to be a little bit different. We are going to allow the top 50%. So there are no more divisions, no more leagues. You don't have to win your league or anything. You just have to finish in the top 50% of all entries. So like, let's say that there's 20 entries for fantasy lineups. You got to finish in the top 10. If you finish in the top 10, then you win the prize. You win a 65A international player, or you can win a 75A prospect into the following season's draft class. So if you're playing this in season two, your prospect is going to be included in season three's draft class, not season two, season three's draft class. So this is available tonight. So you guys can actually go ahead and pick your players for your team. That's going to lock for the entirety of the season. I don't have any injuries turned on. So you're rest assured that that's not going to affect your lineup, but make sure you guys are getting this in and your lineup set and submitted by Friday. So next Friday, 
is actually October 6th. So that's when GGBL opening day for season two is gonna start. And at that point, I'm just gonna go ahead and lock the form and that no responses are gonna be able to come through any longer. So you have till Friday, October 6th to get all of your submissions in. And again, top 50%, you guys are gonna win the prize and be eligible for the postseason game for this fantasy aspect of the GGBL. So guys, that's it for the off season. Leave a like if you like this thing. Let me know what your thoughts were about free agency, about the off season as a whole. Did you kind of like the process? Was it fast? Did you expect it to be a little bit more exciting? I thought it was fairly exciting for season one. I'd like to see in the future more free agents become available. We kind of, we kind of didn't get very lucky on the 18 guys that we selected through tender contracts. Maybe in the future we'll get more. But yeah, three out of 18. That was kind of a bummer, but you know, what can you do? Sometimes players want to go back to their teams. They, they want to go back home, right? <laughs> so guys, that's it. Leave a like if you like this thing. I'll see you on Friday, October 6th for GGBL Season 2's opening day. All 15 matchups are going to be shown in that highlight video. So it might be a little bit of a long one, but it'll be fun when I, I can guarantee it. I've already got some gameplay already for... For opening day and i can tell you that there are some pretty darn good games it's going to be a fun one guys promise you no clickbait there <laughs> i think you guys can trust my opinion there so i'll see you on october 6th get your form in good luck i'll see you for opening day as always thank you so much for watching and peace